Hey guys, it's Paul here with Toolmetrics, and Laguna has sent me out one of their brand new PX12 planers for evaluation. This is a portable unit, weighs in at 68 pounds, so I was able to lift it out of the package very easily, set it onto a stand, and the installation was very straightforward with only the thickness handle uh, and the dust chute being installed, and uh, then it was up and running, ready to go. The showcase feature on this machine is the cutter head. So what What's unique about that in this class of planer is that it, is, it uses carbide insert tooling. Uh, across the cutter head it has 26 square inserts, half inch by half inch, that have a, a sharp edge on all four sides. So what that allows you to do, a few things, one, they're positioned so that they're striking the wood at a low angle and they're slicing the wood rather than a traditional knife that is scooping out wood. So you're going to get a flatter surface. Because of that low angle, it's also much better at dealing with uh, figured wood such as curly maple, bird's eye maple, and I'll show you that uh, in some of the tests that I ran. And then finally, at maintenance time, it's a much better experience than the traditional knives. So if, you, if they do get dull or if you nick something and need to rotate, all you do is use the onboard Torx wrench to loosen up the cutter rotate it 90 degrees, lock it back down, and you're ready to go. No knife setting jigs, no uh, height adjustments, etc. It's, it's foolproof and it's very quick and simple. Laguna refers to the new cutter head design as the Quad Tech 1. Now this is not to be confused with their Shear Tech technology, which is a quite different geometry uh, on their cutter heads on their higher end machines. This has been modified or re-engineered really to uh, be able to be manufactured more economically for the entry level market like this planer. Some of the other features on the machine uh, comes with a two horsepower motor, which is ample power for planing wide, dense hardwoods, which I'll show you. Uh, the maximum width capacity, 12 and a half inches uh, that you're able to plane, a maximum thickness of six inches, uh, and a, a minimum thickness of one eighth inch. So you can actually plane all the way down to one eighth of an inch uh, and get a good surface quality. The architecture of the machine uses a four post design for raising and lowering the cutter head. Each post is three quarter inch solid polished steel rod uh, that gives you precision registration as you raise uh, up and down, keeping the cutter head parallel with the planer bed. Underneath the planer, you have a chain and sprocket mechanism that's used to raise and lower the cutter head. A very durable, robust design, kind of like you would find on a stationary planer. You've got an adjustable thickness scale so you can see exactly where you're at when you're planing down to a certain thickness. And a depth stop, positive stop, that allows you to set a destination thickness and it prevents you from planing any thinner than that. Here we have a ribbed polyurethane drive belt. These are smooth running, vibration dampening, long lasting, really good choice for a planer. The bed on the PX12 is a polished steel surface, nice and flat. The outfeed and infeed tables are also steel, fold up uh, for convenience, and also have nice leveling feet so you can get the, get the flatness dialed in exactly where you want it. Using the PX12 is pretty intuitive, particularly if you've used planers in the past. To get started, you can set the final thickness using the depth stop if you want to use that feature. And then one turn of the hand crank equals 1 16th inch depth of cut. Simply slide the board under the thickness gauge, dial it in to establish your first cut and the depth of cut, then lock the cutter head. Turn on the planer, make sure you've got dust collection going, and feed the material through. After that first pass, unlock the cutter head, set the depth for the next cut, and away you go. And just continue going until you have reached the final destination thickness. And you can verify your final thickness using the gauge on top, which is a real handy built-in feature. All right, let's give it a good test now. Here's a eight foot chunk of rough, very rough cherry. I've uh, got some curly maple. Uh, we'll see how it does on tear out on the live edge. We'll see how it handles that delicacy. Uh, and then I've got a, a thick chunk of quarter saw and white, white oak, some zebra wood, uh, a piece of wenge, which I think will be an interesting test for a planer because it's so splintery. 
uh, a thick slab of sugar maple that has quite a bit of cruel figure in it. So we'll see how it does with that. And then one that I think will be a very interesting test, this is Purple Heart. Uh, this is about six or seven feet long, and it's only three sixteenths, uh, between a quarter and three sixteenths inch thick, and it's about uh, 11 inches wide. So this will be a good test as well. All right, you can be the judge of how we did. Uh, it had no problem putting a great surface on each of these. Um, no tear out whatsoever on this soft curly maple. Uh, same with the quarter sawn white oak. Uh, we get into the uh, harder, denser woods, zebra wood, no problem. The wenge, which I really thought was gonna be potentially a problem, uh, it did a remarkable job with. Uh, same with the hard curly maple, flawless, and even on the very thin super wide purple heart it did a great job. When I'm putting a tool like this through its paces I always try to come up with whatever objective measurements I can that I think people might find interesting. With this tool I really looked at four key areas. First area is snipe. Uh, with the locking cutter head, I had high expectations about the minimization of snipe. And I found that as long as I face jointed the board first, establishing a perfectly flat reference surface that I would run on the bottom side uh, and plane, I found that snipe was virtually non-existent. The second area that I looked at was sound output, and I think that's a very important metric because uh, portable planers in particular are notoriously loud. So the introduction of the uh, carbide insert tooling into that design, my expectation was that that would lower the, the noise output by quite a bit, and it did. I've tested planers with straight knives. They're usually in that 105 decibel range in my shop uh, while they're cutting. Uh, this one was running in the low to mid 90s, 92, 93, 94. 95 decibels so and that in my experience has been uh, the difference roughly kind of in the 10 decibel range straight knives to carbide insert knives so that held true here nice noise reduction another important area because these things produce so much debris so quickly is the dust collection and I have a pretty big dust collector and have probably at least 800 CFM coming directly all the way to the tool itself but I found about with that kind of dust collection hooked up to it about uh, nearly 100% efficient in terms of what it was gathering virtually no, no dust or debris was left behind all right, the final area that I look at, and I look at this on all power tools that I test, and that is the amperage draw. Uh, I want you to understand the power requirements that you're gonna need. The manual says you should have a dedicated 20 amp circuit for this, and I concur with that. I measure the amperage draw when it's spinning idle, uh, not cutting any wood in the 10 amp range. Uh, once you start cutting some wider uh, planks, some hard, I tested it with hard maple, uh, you're in the uh, 18 amp range, which is really starting to bump up against the ceiling for a 20 amp circuit. So definitely don't plan on using this with a 15 amp circuit. Make sure you configure a 20 amp circuit for this.
All right, that wraps up my look at the new PX12 planer with the Quad Tech One cutter head. I'm really glad that Laguna is innovating and bringing uh, this insert tooling into an entry-level tool like this uh, to produce good quality cuts on a variety of hardwoods. Let me know if you have questions down below. I'd be happy to answer anything that I can for you. Hope you'll give a thumbs up to the video if you found it useful, and I hope you'll subscribe to the Toolmetrics channel and come back for more woodworking, wood turning, and tool-related videos.